This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. Episode number 91. Yes, I did double check, unlike last episode. Because <laughs> the number is labeled right on the site and everything. I read the wrong number because after the uh, after the end of the year show, my dumbass forgot to change the labeling. So I was saying episode 89 the entire time last time. <laughs> well, the numbers are overrated anyway. I mean, I've never used math, right? Right. Yeah. So, says the girl who works in retail. Yeah, I, counting things at that. <laughs> yes. But uh, if this is your first time, I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and as you hear, my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, people of the interwebs. Yes. Oh, so we've got two weeks worth of news to talk about, because last week, for those who didn't catch us last week, Holly and I spent the entire time talking MAGFest. Which kind of got away from us, but that's okay. I think it all just needed to come out. Because Holly and I also do constructive deconstruction together with Misha Mayhem. And Misha didn't go to MAGFest this past year, so she would have felt like a little bit more left out. And I didn't want that. So it was like, alright, we saved for Thespian Talk. And we did, and it's like, boom! One hour. <laughs> Going on <laughs> everything. Just to talk about a convention. Yes. <laughs> uh, but it does serve our new format a little bit better though you know so because we don't have the break in the middle anymore so we just go on for an hour about whatever don't have to worry about it. we just have to worry about one 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 bit of time constraint instead of two time constraints which might make it a little easier especially if we end up needing to talk about news or focus point segment more than just bullshitting or vice versa so i'm it, sorry you just implied that we do anything on this show other than bullshitting good point <laughs> That is, that is a very good point. Um, but uh, speaking of bullshit, or, or at least uh, bullshit that has been destroyed and removed and resolved, um, I am not a big, I am not really into the My Little Pony fandom, but I hear a lot about it because I know a bunch of bronies and Pegasisters and everything. And thanks to Cards Against Humanity, I heard of Princess Molestia's Tumblr blog. That recently has been removed. <laughs> Off of Tumblr... Because Hasbro eventually came up and said, yeah, you know what? You, you need to stop this. You, you, you cannot represent us anymore. So you have to take this down. And it's down. It's gone. And there was so much rejoicing. And, and you got to understand how that's kind of a big deal because um, even, even though it's Hasbro and they, all they care about is making money, the people who actually make My Little Pony, who actually go through the episodes and they write the show, are very, very – much in love with their fans they do things that the fans want to see they put in cameos and characters and stuff just for the fans they they listen to their fans quite a bit so um they respect them so much and it 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 takes a lot for them to go this is too much oh yeah and and i and obviously the the molestia blog that was that's more like Overly rapey and molest. Well, it's in the title, apparently, you know, and all of that. I never really got a look at it, but I'm I'm just guessing from the name alone. It's like, yeah, that's that's a little rapey, a little possibly child molesty. I'm I'm guessing. It's just really really uncomfortable. <laughs> uh. So it, so it's good that it's removed. Um, there was much rejoicing and. And my girlfriend has been sitting there drinking the 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 bitter tears of the dude bronies. Of that, the dude bronies. Yes, that is a new term now, dude bronies. The dude bronies, otherwise yes. known as most bronies. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, and those and those same people need to stop wearing my style of hat. They can fuck off with that. Oh my god! So <laughs> I worked at my little pony convention last year. Uh oh. And we played a game, take a shot every time you see someone in a fedora. Oh, no. <laughs> How fast did you get drunk? Uh, well, we didn't actually do it because we were working. But uh, if we had actually done it throughout the entire convention, we pretty much would not have stopped drinking. Oh, Jeebus. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if the, the entire world is ready to experience Drunk Cat yet. 
Yeah. Well, you know, if I've been drunk on the air before. Well, yeah, that's right. Nerd to the third, you were a little plastered, weren't you? At, <laughs> at one point. <laughs> at, on the on our big 100th episode when yes. we got drunk and uh, and played Never Have I Ever. Oh, uh, yes. And it was amazing. <laughs> it was. I was so glad I was there for that. That was great. <laughs> I really hope we get to get drunk again on, on air because that was fun. Hmm. You know, that might be an interesting... Might be an interesting thing for a live show. Who knows? You know, you know. If if you guys if you guys think that might be a fun idea, write in and tell us. That, that would be yes. Great. Specify that you want us to play drunken cards against humanity online. Yes. So specify these things so that we are certain certain to do them. Yes, please. Because we will, and it will be glorious. It will. And what else is glorious? Speaking of drinks, uh, my girlfriend she has her Tumblr and everything, and she reblogs all of the things. And she's also a big Pokemon fan, so she follows, you know, follows the blog. And one of them actually came up with a series of frozen cocktails based off of the EV Evolution lines. So oh, I've got, seen those; those are amazing looking. It's like it's like they have EVs with like cake, vodka, Kahlua, Kahlua, Bailey's, chocolate eclair, ice cream bar, and chocolate syrup. That sounds good. They also have an Umbreon. Naturally, I'm going to try one eventually. Bourbon, Coke, lemon juice, and orange juice. And if you can't guess why I want to try an Umbreon, um, it's my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Everybody else who's been long listening is like, we know this, we know this. It's for the newbies. Shush. <laughs> uh, but this is one I would, I would be, I would be kind of scared to try. Fireball whiskey, peach schnapps, iced tea, lemonade, dash of strawberry syrup for color. A Flareon. Yeah, that actually looks a little bit gross. I mean, it looks cool, sounds a little bit gross. Don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah, I, I, I would be scared simply because fireball whiskey. Whiskey burns enough going down. <laughs> you don't need to add fire to it. Come on. And then you actually light it on fire. <laughs> oh, Jeebus. <laughs> that would be just, horrifying. Just no, fire does not belong in my throat, thank you. Not literal fire. Which is why I never really eat jalapenos either. <laughs> it's just too hot for me. And over the past week, um, this is counting as my shout out for this week. Um, there is a site called ortail o r t i l dot dash net dot org, and this was pointed out to me by Lady Renee. She found what is known as the Cookie Clicker. It is a fabulous time waster. In which you click a big cookie to bake cookies, and you can buy different things to increase the amount of cookies you make, can make at you know per second, including buying auto cursors to auto click the cookie for you. It, it, it's it is an amazing waste of time. I've I've last time I left it, I had even cookles cookies to the no portals to the cookie verse rather. I, I think, and antimatter displacements to tr convert antimatter into cookies. You know, like you do. Yeah, so, you know, bending the laws of time to sell more cookies. Although you do, you can also buy grandmas. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can buy grandmas. Yes. Oh my god. And Dude, you can also upgrade on. everything. You can upgrade everything, including your grandmas, and. The upgrade for grandmas got to a point to where some of them would become demonic and possessed and start sending bad things to the cookie. And it's like, yeah, I sell all my grandmas now. <laughs> it's like they, they just – apparently they got fed up with it, gained satanic powers, and decided, you know what? Fuck your cookie. Nom, nom, nom. Oh. But, but it's interesting, and, and the site for it is – as I said, ortail.dashnet.org, that's O-R-T-E-I-L, slash cookie clicker, all one word. Or if you want, you could just put in cookie clicker into Google, and it'll bring up the same thing. That's how I found it. <laughs> oh, but uh, after after all of this time not being on the show, uh, do you have any shout-outs? Um, no. No, of course not. <laughs> I've been getting ready for the Golden Bacon Awards. Uh, on Nerd to the Third, which will be coming up, which I guess this kind of qualifies as a shout out. Um, so I actually haven't really had time to spend a whole lot of time doing anything other than just watching a lot of anime and getting ready for the award show. Yeah, watching all of the anime. 
<laughs> yeah, which uh, which we're going to record the award show um, this coming week. I don't know exactly what day it'll go up, but it will be recorded this week. So definitely, if you listen to Nerd to the Third, um, definitely keep an eye out because our big award show that we do every year is coming soon, and we're really excited. Yes, and if you haven't. And if you haven't been listening to Nerd to the Third, why the hell not? What's wrong with you? Yeah, you fucking lazy ass bitches. <laughs> yes. Or whatever. <laughs> bitches, bastards, things in between, cloacas. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I I brought up cloacas because I I want to get some of my friends from around down here, all together. And I I admit I've been inspired by Hagen to want to film their reaction to Chirpy. Oh, <laughs> that would be hilarious. I think. Get, get right on that, son. <laughs> so yeah, that would that would be hilarious. That's something I do want to try and plan sometime. But as I've stated before, we've got two weeks worth of news that I've that I've managed to kind of dwindle down and everything. And so here we go. A South Shore woman accidentally fatally shot a 65-year-old relative during an argument about whether the gun would fire, police said. Joanne Smith and Willie Smith were arguing about whether or not a gun would fire about 7 p.m. Wednesday at the woman's home in whatever block address. I'm not giving that out. During the argument, Joanne Smith pointed the weapon at Willie Smith's face and pulled the trigger, shooting him in the eye, the authorities said. Willie Smith... Oh, this was this is out of the Chicagoland area. Okay. It, it didn't have it right at the beginning, so it's like, okay, I don't remember it. But it's it's Chicagoland area, so uh, hi, hi, Becky. <laughs> but uh, the guy was taken to the local hospital where he died at 9 a.m. Friday, according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Joanne Smith was charged with one count of reckless discharge of a firearm, and she is expected to appear for a bond hearing Saturday. So by this point, she's already appeared. Police described the argument as domestic, but the relationship between the two was not Im immediately known. I'm going to guess, let's see, 65-year-old, 52, um, maybe mother and son, maybe uncle and niece. Could be married for all we know. But that's, that's not the big question I have for this article. Why would you try and resolve an argument about whether or not a gun would fire by pointing the gun at somebody's face? Ladies and gentlemen, this is why we can't have nice things. And by we, I mean the human race. Yes. Just really? You couldn't fire it into, like, the ground? I mean, well, okay, maybe you're in an apartment, so maybe the ground may not be the best thing. Like, a sofa, you know... Pull a bullet out of a sofa, yeah, it's inconvenient, ruins the sofa, sure, but that, that's going to cost a lot less than having to deal with the charges of accidentally killing somebody by trying to put a bullet in their face. I mean, I don't care if I think the if the if the bullet is going to work or not. If somebody points a gun at my head, I'm going to dodge. Whether yeah. or not I think that gun is loaded and will will work, I'm gonna fucking dodge. Exactly, and and. It's I have to wonder. It got him in the eye. That, that that's that makes me wonder. Did this guy try to dodge, and just ended up not get, being fast enough and got shot in the eye? I mean that that's that's a question that we need to know, people. Because we're curious, <laughs> with a morbid sort of way. Yes, very very morbid. <laughs> oh, but this this next one is out of Rustburg, Virginia. This one is just. Just, just, what the fuck. A Virginia woman and two others have been charged with malicious wounding and child abuse after her two children were tattooed and attempts were then made to remove the tattoos. They report that 35-year-old Melissa Delp and her 32-year-old boyfriend, Daniel Janney, were charged Friday. According to a search warrant, the pair was charged after Janney attempted to remove the tattoos from Delp's daughters with a HOT RAZOR BLADE! What the fuck? HOT? No! No! What were they going to do? Just, like, take off the skin with it? Like, like skin that section of, 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 of their bodies? What? 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 Why? Why do people... No. People who obviously don't understand how tattoos work should probably not let children get tattoos. No. And here's even, here's even another thing. The parents, the ones that, that, that are also that are being charged with the 
razor blade thing, they weren't the ones that authorized the tattoos. Oh, who was that man? Okay, it is. It says here that the girls were in the care of a family friend, Alexander Edwards, when he allegedly tattooed them without consent. The guy is also charged with abduction. Yeah. I, I just kind of want to know what tattoos they got. I mean, they're kids, right? Like, was it like ponies and unicorns or? Could have been something very simple. Pokemon, maybe? Maybe, you know, have 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 a little Pikachu face right there on the on the bicep there, you know. You know, that, 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 would, that would be something every kid should should try and get. No, no, no. Not a real one, at least. Fake tattoos? Sure. Real ones? No. And and then where were the tattoos that they were so... I mean, if the tattoos weren't in some place really visible, they I don't think you would be so worried that you would have to, I don't know, take it off with a hot knife. But if it was, like, someplace visible... Yeah, which makes it even stupider, because I, I, I have a feeling that if they had succeeded and removed the daughter's tattoos with the hot razor blade, and they got it off and everything, they're going to have to explain some shit. Like, okay, why is the whole section of your arm skin missing? Uh, mommy and Daddy uh, to, to remove the tattoos, and, and they had nothing else on hand? You know, it's called a dermatologist, people. Those exist, and they can remove, you know, tattoos. It's called laser removal. It's a thing. It's... Probably not a thing approved for children, though. No. It's but, also but fucking I could have, expensive as hell. I could imagine that if, if like, the school or something found out that these kids had tattoos, the parents would get in a lot of trouble. Of course, not as much trouble as they're in now, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. What I want to know is, where, where are the kids at at this point? I mean, I'm assuming they're with some kind of, you know, Family child protective service. It's family services of some sort. Yeah, uh, but but hopefully hopefully those kids are okay, Jeebus. But it just wow. Uh, I know I, I it's like nothing should surprise me anymore, but at the same time everything surprises me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Maybe you have some hope for humanity, and that's why these things still surprise. Maybe, and I've been doing this show on and off for six years. This should not surprise me. I should have no hope left for humanity. <laughs> but I do. And then, <laughs> Sad and true. Yes. And then I cause everybody to take a shot because this one's out of Florida. And I think everybody's, <laughs> I think everybody's heard of this one by now. A moviegoer shot two people, one of them fatally, reportedly after one of them refused to stop texting during a movie. I... I uh, I can understand being annoyed when somebody talks or texts during a movie. That's distracting, annoying, sure. Texting, I personally am going, probably going to be a little more lenient on because I can actually focus on the screen. But, um, you know, and not everybody can do that. And, and I'm not trying to say that if you can't do that, then you're, you know, some kind of subhuman or whatever. It's just different things different people can do, you know. And even with that said, um, don't text during a movie, please. Just don't. No. That, if, that's... if you're if you're watching a movie, then you're there to fucking watch the movie. Don't sit the whole time on your phone texting your friends or being on Facebook. You know, you're right. paying a lot of money to sit in that movie theater. Yeah, it's not like you were paying a nickel or dime back in whatever time it was where they actually cost a nickel or dime. You're paying upwards. What? How, how much are movie prices now, at least where you are? Um... Depending on when you go, anywhere between six to twelve dollars, depending on when and where. Yeah. So okay, so it's not so awful bad. I've heard of it. I've heard. I don't know how accurate, but I've heard it getting up towards like twenty dollars or so for a ticket. It's, it's probably like for three D and stuff and certain yeah. theaters and. So basically, you're paying the cost of a meal at McDonald's just to go see this movie, and you're you're gonna ruin it by texting during it. Why? You can text at home. You can text. You know, at a McDonald's. <laughs> and a lot of theaters now have a zero tolerance policy. So you're paying all this money to get the ticket, to sit down with your fucking extra large popcorn and your, your giant soda. And, and you're going to sit there and text and get thrown out of the theater. Yeah, that's really stupid. I think the only place where anybody would be allowed to text would be the very back row. 
where nobody else can just look look ahead and be distracted by the lights. Right. Because you know that I would be lenient on it as if I was a theater owner. Any any seat up, you know, beyond that, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, but but yeah, but but even with all of that said, shooting somebody for doing it is a little bit over the line. I mean, there I gonna... <laughs> there are steps. It's usually like, hey, get off your phone. Hey, dude, I'm serious. Get off your phone or I'm going to tell somebody. Okay, this guy didn't get off his phone. I'm going to go tell somebody. You do not go from getting pissed off at a guy for being on his phone, asking him to turn off his phone, and then fucking shooting him. You're skipping a whole lot of steps in there, one of which is therapy. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, just, you know, god damn it, really? I mean, I know I've been pissed off to the point where I say, you know, I would want to do this to certain somebody because of some annoying thing they've done. I think we've all have been there. I would say a good 80 to 90% of us would not actually do it. This fucker, however, and, and it turns out I believe he was, was, oh yeah, he is a 71-year-old former Tampa police officer. Is is the guy who shot the who shot the uh, t- the uh, people who were texting, or at least the person who was texting? But he shot him and then shot somebody else. We don't we don't know why the other one did. He's like, really? You 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 know you you not only shoot the person who's texting, but you shoot his buddy who probably was just trying to tell his friend, hey, you know what? You need to stop that shit. You know, or it could have just been some other poor fucker that was just there and just as annoyed as the shooter was. Uh, but he's also a former police officer, so <laughs> I don't I don't really know what that says. But uh he should have known better than to fucking shoot somebody over something stupid. And and then I was hearing later that they found out he was he was texting his his child's daycare or or something like that. Yeah. And it's like and and, and let, let's see, does the article actually say that it was like at the beginning of the movie that he did it or or uh, it was matinee, matinee showing. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it doesn't say what, what what part of the movie it was when he was texting or anything. But if it was like at the beginning of the movie, you know, and everything, you suddenly remember, oh shit, gotta do this, you know. Or maybe the movie started late and you just now realized, oh shit, you know, text the daycare. That that would be the kind of texting I would definitely accept a little bit more, especially if it's like quick, you know, hurry up, do the thing. And then put it back, you know? Yeah, he was probably doing it the whole time. But, you know, we weren't there, so we don't really know. The point yeah. is, is that we all get pissed off. Mm-hmm. You don't go fucking shoot somebody for texting. It's really actually nauseating how many people say that the guy deserved it. No. Um, it's it's really, like, it really is disappointing and kind of that whole losing your faith in humanity thing when, you know, you see the responses from people online saying the guy was, you know, should have listened. The guy totally deserved it. I would have done the same thing. Well, like, no, no, you really wouldn't have because you're not a sociopath or something. You don't just go around shooting people. No, 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 no. Now, now would I have said something to him? Probably. Would – I don't think I would have physically like punched him in the head or anything. I would want to. I would really, really want to, but I probably wouldn't because you know, I, I have a little bit more self-control than that. <sighs> Plus, I mean, you know, I, it would be my luck. I'd punch him in the head, and he'd be like this big Duke Nukem bodybuilder type <laughs> guy, and he, you know, he, he would basically eviscerate me with his pinky. I mean I've told off somebody for being on, on the phone in their theater, and in – and it was some little like 15 year old fucking off on Facebook uh, with her family sitting right there. And and the best thing that you can do in that situation is to wait until it's a nice, quiet part of the movie and then very loudly say, can you please stop inconveniencing people by being on your phone? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then their whole fucking family hears that. And that's that's, you know, I think that little level of humiliation is. Was uh, it was decent, it's decent. Yeah, I think I think that teenager got a good talking to. <laughs> Probably not, because their parents were sitting the whole time watching them on the phone. But you know, um, I don't really have a whole lot of faith in in 
you know, those kinds of parents who just really aren't paying any attention to their damn little spoiled teenage shitheads. Yeah. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> oh, yeah, but uh, we, we leave this and we go to something. Next two are definitely going to be a little darker and deeper. And, and oh, God. State lawmakers in South Carolina are pushing for legislation that would mandate prayer sessions in schools. Mandate, mind you. The bill H3526 would require, require teachers to lead a moment of silence at the beginning of each school day, during which the teacher would be allowed to deliver a prayer. And that's not a moment of silence, that's a moment of prayer. Students who do not want to participate would be allowed to leave the classroom. Yes, and be able to be singled out and bullied by their more religious peers. Way to go! Oh. The bill was introduced in February 2013, but is currently stuck in the House Committee on Judiciary. The Supreme Court has held that teacher-led prayer constitutes a government endorsement of religion and violates the First Amendment of the Constitution. No shit! Exactly. The lawmakers said they were willing to compromise on that point. Okay, how are you going to compromise? Let's find out. The compromise would be to have the students pray to whomever they want to. If they want to do away with teachers conducting the prayer, that would be fine with us. The essential part of the bill, the important part, is putting prayer back in school. Okay. Again, prayer never left school. Prayer can still happen in school. You are not going to be sent to the principal's office because you took a little bit of time out, off to the side and said a quick prayer for whatever reason. That's not going to happen. It's just, no. You are more than welcome to pray above your uh, whatever they call food in, in lunchtime. Yeah. You know, you have that option. Prayer doesn't have to be said out loud, as they have clearly made evident by saying that you can, you know, pray to whoever you want and it can be a moment of silence. So clearly they recognize that you don't have to pray out loud in order to pray. So why do we need to stop and take a moment to do it when it can clearly be done at any time by anyone? Yeah, I, I it's it's more of that more of that and I'm going to I'm going to call it a Christian a, a Christian tendrils wanting to try and get their fingers into every child. Not in that way. And, and, and just... Ew! 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 <laughs> and ew. there goes the bad images. Uh, but, but no, I think the word I'm looking for is indoctrination. And, and they, 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 they want people to have religion, as long as it's a Christian religion. And when I say they, I obviously mean those that are, you know, the more kooky, the more fundamentalist, the more that this is a Christian nation. You know, those people that make good, decent Christians that are open-minded, that are generally great people, like my girlfriend, for example, you know, that make them want to look at them and just, you know, put them into a closet somewhere so they can just have all of their arguments to themselves. Or, or as I think she has put it at some point, put them on an island. Just, just yes. take all of them, put them on an island. It and should they be sit... the island from Lost, and then they can all get eaten by smoke monsters. There you go. <laughs> I'm for that. Yes. So, yeah. Oh. What's what's so stupid about this is that I don't think this will pass. Um, I, I think this is like somebody's an attempt to win over some conservative voters by like making it look like they make an effort to bring religion in and, and that's, you know, the type of voter they want. Um, it's just, this is so dumb because this in no way will improve education, but they're trying to get it put in schools, mandatory in schools, even though it does absolutely nothing for a child's education. No, it, it's so it's, disgusting. It, it, it is disgusting. Yeah. It is, it is at its base, neither positive nor negative for the education. You know, at least I've not, if it's forced, I can see the negative, especially if they force certain things like, yo, God is the one who created everything. And then all of this evolution stuff is bullshit because God did it. Blah, 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 you know, that's where it gets harmful. Saying a little prayer, it's harmless, you know, and, and kids can still do that. It's the point where the teachers 
are doing it, that's where the violation comes in. See, I have no problem if like if a student asks I don't, I mean I don't know, would a student asking permission to lead those who want in prayer and and being allowed to do so would that be a violation of the first amendment or or would would that be fine as long as it's not the teacher doing it or not doing it during class time? As long as you're not doing it during class time because you shouldn't be preaching religion in a public classroom. You can teach religion right. like from a, an outside perspective because I've taken religious classes, but they were like analytical of religion and not teaching me to believe something in a particular religion. And I'm for that. Yeah. Um, but like if you want to like learn about read the Bible and, and preach to other people, that's a club. That's not a class. Right. So yeah, so just just so we can be clarified and clear on everything there, that's where I brought that up. But uh, now this next one is short, and we I know we covered it a little bit on the most recent constructive deconstruction. But we're bringing it up again because, as I've said on there, this is one of those that needs to continually be brought up and brought to the forefront, especially, you know, things like this, things like what our focus point is going to be about and things like, you know, religion and, poli religion and politics and everything. This is another one of those things that we need to keep to the forefront, keep putting it out there so people can see, hey, hello, this is bullshit, and maybe we can try and fix it. Maryville, Missouri. A Missouri man accused of sexually assaulting a 14-year-old schoolmate when he was 17 has been charged with a misdemeanor child endangerment. He was... Uh, the charge against 19-year-old Matt Barnett was filed Thursday in Not Notaway County Court in Maryville. Special Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker was, has been re-examining the girl's allegations that Barnett raped her at a tw January 2012 house party when he was a Maryville High School senior and she was a fresh freshman. Barnett says the sex was consensual. He is, arraigned to be, he is to be arraigned Thursday afternoon. Baker stepped in after the local prosecutor was criticized for dropping the case because he alleged that Daisy's family had stopped cooperating. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they did. Right. What they don't tell you in this was, wasn't this the same kid that 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 also had like a judge as a relative or something, and, and had somebody in like local politics that if if this got out and he was actually guilty, because I don't remember if there was evidence like there was in Steubenville that there was that left no doubt, but even even if there was, you know. If, if I'm remembering correctly, there was the, the, the I think the kid in question here had, had like some sort of you know political connection that that the the polit politician was like okay we don't want this to get out there it would tarnish my name that sort of thing so we're gonna cover this up and play blame the victim and make her look like a liar and then all of that went down and, and tell cool. lies about her family so that we can get away with dropping everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, yeah. And then, of course, as, as the big thing that I remember from it, not just the victim blaming, not just the fact that this kid is pretty much getting away with, as as far as we know, getting away with rape, which I'm, I'm more inclined to believe that he did rape her, especially since all of this cover-up. Why would it be cover-up if it was just at the most at this point? Uh, let's see. Well, let's see if it was 17 and 14. That's not even statutory rape. So if it was so consensual and, and, and everything, and they were within the legal age limit to actually have sex, why the cover-up? Just, you know, that right there, I, it sounds conspiracy theorist, doesn't it? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But if you look at it, it makes a little sense. At least I think so. Why would you cover up a 14-year-old having sex with a 17-year-old? Maybe because she cried rape, you know? And... I'm willing to bet that because of all this cover-up, the cry of rape is accurate. Especially since now the town, it, it, this I believe this was the one where, uh, where after the family like left Maryville or whatever, they were working on selling the house that they had. The townspeople came and burned the house down because, the you know, yeah, because you know, fuck her because they were going to ruin the life of this of this young star, probably I think probably athlete. I wouldn't be surprised. This young, bright athlete who has his whole future ahead of him. Yeah, you raped a you raped a fourteen year old girl. 
your future is going to be fucked. Especially now that it's all in national news, and people are, are, are suspecting and seeing that, yeah, this kid? <laughs> no, we don't want a rapist working for us. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I, I know this is kind of mean, but I'm hoping it's really hard for him to get certain jobs, you know, to where he, he has to have a hard time of it because of the fact that he raped this girl and a lot of the people, especially me, can see through this, can see through the bullshit. Like, again, why cover it up if there's nothing wrong with it? <gasps> oh, yeah. So, um, and this, this does go back into, you know, rape culture because because <laughs> I'm willing to bet that even if even if he admitted that he raped her with his connections and even and, and like I said I'm thinking he was a sports I'm thinking he was an athlete I could be wrong um you know the way that we put athletes up on a pedestal in this country oh boys will be boys They're, they've just got their urges and everything which, as I've said on Constructive Deconstruction, it is a, an insult to both men and women. It's an insult to women thinking that, oh, men can't control themselves because women do this and, and the victim blaming and, and the fact that men are supposed to typically see women as objects of sexual desire and to, to, to have sex with and everything, no matter whether she wants it or not. And then it insults the men who, who are obviously – hi, I'm one of them – have better things to do than act on certain impulses that – for one, they would get in trouble for, and for two, would make them into horrible human beings. And I hope this kid has to live, at the very least, live with the massive amount of guilt, if he has any. I hope he has to put his name in a registry. I hope so, too. Because, yeah. Although, ugh. You, 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 yeah, yeah, fuck this kid. Fuck those kids from Steubenville, too. You know, you know yeah, they, they, they do not, they deserve worse than what they got. This, yeah. Oh, do you have anything to add on this? No, I think you've pretty much said everything. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to do that. Oh. <clears throat> so this next one lightens it up a bit. And we go over to England, over over to, to the, uh, the British Isles and all of that. A British woman attempted to sue her former lawyers for professional negligence, claiming that, alongside a number of other allegations, they failed to advise that finalizing divorce proceedings would inevitably cause her marriage to end. What? Wait. Yes. Wait, say that again. They failed to advise that finalizing divorce proceedings would inevitably cause her marriage to end. So are you saying that this woman filed for divorce because she wanted to get a divorce and and now she's suing them because her marriage is over? Is she is. The woman is. It, it's 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 uh she apparently I don't think it says anything about what her relationship with her husband her now ex-husband was. But um let's see. The allegation was revealed in a public appeal last month, which George, just, Lord Justice Briggs said, the most striking of Miss Mulcahy's many allegations of negligence against her solicitors was that, having regard to her Roman Catholic faith, Mrs. Boot had failed to give her the advice which was requisite in view of her firmly held belief in the sanctity of marriage. If you believe in the sanctity of marriage, why'd you get, the, why'd you get a divorce? You know... This is very confusing. I'm not sure that this person is smart enough to live. I don't know either, but but you know, it's it's crazy. It's it's, it's and it's because and, and it ties to religion a bit. This is this is where religion, if, if you take it to the wrong points, this is where you get stories like this. I mean, I can respect. Okay, you get married and your religious beliefs say you should stick with your husband through thick and thin. Um, under 90% of the circumstances, I can respect that. I can understand that. Now, if he's battering the shit out of you on a daily basis, then you need to get the fuck out of there. Fuck your religion. I'm sorry. But and, and but this, it's something like this where it nothing ever says whether or not she was being battered or if it was just irreconcilable, irreconcilable differences or what have you. It doesn't say – it doesn't give the nature of why she wanted the divorce. And – <clears throat> and she says they re failed to regard her Roman Catholic faith 
and should have recommended a judicial separation, which is a step down from a full divorce, as an alternative course of action. It's it's not your lawyer's job to go and and know every single thing about your religion and make religious decisions for you. It is your lawyer's job to make the best possible possible legal decision for you. Exactly. That's it's you you are you you are made of stupid lady, okay? You are made of stupid. And at least in this case, who knows? Maybe she could she could be very, very well thought out and very good at other things. But in this Marriage case... Marriage is not among them. No, just no, no. No, when you ask for a divorce, that's what they give you. It's like McDonald's. You ask for a burger, they give you a burger. Usually. Sometimes they give you a dead rat, but, but that, that's <laughs> only happened to me once, and that was in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> No, 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 no. And as we all know, fuck Ohio. Yes. Fuck Ohio. Except for a few people in there. There are a few cool people in Ohio. But besides them, fuck Ohio. Ah. And we go to the other side of the country, our country actually, Spokane, Washington. Oh, dude, let's hear this because I've got lots of family in Spokane. Yes. This one's just random. A woman on her way home from work was hit at a red light by a car with a chihuahua behind the wheel. Okie dokie then. <laughs> the dog had apparently knocked the parked car out of gear and coasted into traffic. The, when the woman looked up to see who had hit her, she couldn't believe what she saw. I was shocked. I didn't know if I was crazy, if there was just this little dog that had taken a joyride. Uh, but thankfully, nobody was hurt and the damage was minimal. So it's, it's, it's not like it was full force or anything. It was just like all of a sudden, oh, shit, something's knocking me over. Boom. Oh, shit. Car hit me. What the fuck? I'm going to get it. It's a chihuahua. <laughs> it's a fucking chihuahua in the fucking car. I always asserted that chihuahuas are evil. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so yeah. Thankfully, we end on that little bit of, of hilarity randomness. That's... Uh, why would... I, it, it has... Ha, how? Ha, how? I, I guess... But how? Yeah, I guess it's not completely unheard of that it would happen. It's just so rare. It, it's like skydiving out of a plane and then the plane turning around and like bisecting you on accident, which has happened before. It is extremely, extremely rare, but it has happened. You know, so it's just one of those things where it's like, it, it's just so low, but it's just the stars align, the planets got together and then and then just had this beam that went to this situation and said, you know what, this is going to happen. It is happening. Ugh. So that's it for the news. We've got about 17 minutes left in the show. And now we finally have time for an actual proper focus point. And I'm going to pre preface this right now. We are also going to be talking about this on the next Constructive Deconstruction after this as well. So, so there will be things, there will be some repeats if you're watching all three of my shows. But again, just like everything else, this is one of those extremely important things that needs to be spread everywhere, like 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 ice cream in a in a theme park full of children. Spread that shit everywhere. Oh, so this one is out of the Huffington Post, and the other top. I mentioned the other topic that we could not get to for the last constructive deconstruction is net neutrality. And this Huffington Post article was originally posted uh, five days ago on the 14th, and, and it says, why you should be freaking out about the end of net neutrality. Because, yeah, as, as a lot of us know, in fact, I'm pretty sure all of us know, the verdict of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia struck down an FCC order commission uh, bleh, an FCC order from 2010 that forced ISPs like Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, Comcast rather, Time Warner, etc. to abide by the principles of network neutrality. These principles broadly stipulate that the ISP network management must be transparent and that ISPs can't engage in practices that block, stifle or discriminate against lawful websites or traffic types on the internet, which as the Huffington Post describes, is the bare-bones story wrapped up in ugly acronyms. But 
why should you care that network neutrality may be gone for good? Well, they list a few things for you. Number one, no more net neutrality means ISPs can now discriminate against content they dislike. Everyone gets their internet from an internet service provider like AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, etc. Under net neutrality rules, these ISPs have to treat all content you access over the internet roughly the same way. They can't speed up traffic from websites they like or delay competitors' traffic. But now with that gone, ISPs can discriminate favoring their business partners while delaying or blocking websites they don't like. Think your cable CEO hates free online porn? Now you'll know for sure. <laughs> Which, as funny as that statement is, it, it, it could be a whole lot worse. Let's take let's take that guy with the glasses, for example. You know, major entertainment site, free entertainment. Everybody makes their living off of it. Well, everybody that has, like, Doug Walker and Brad Jones size views can make a living off of it. And make a decent living. I mean, the shots around Doug's house, he lives in a nice place, I'm, I'm seeing. They've been able to raise money, have a, an actual you know, studio to work with, although that's not just from advertising revenue alone, I understand, but but still, he's, he's they're doing okay. They're doing well for, for themselves, especially living in Chicago, which I understand is not exactly a cheap place to live, so they're doing okay. So let's say, um, let's see, one of the biggest ones, let, we'll use my, we'll, we'll, we'll use my uh, ISP, AT&T, here. Let's say AT&T is like, yeah, we don't like that. All, all of this stuff is, they, you know, they they they're listening to the big wigs over with the MPAA saying, yeah, all of these people that are reviewing these movies using these movie clips and music clips and game clips, you know, they're, they're stealing money. We need to help stop that. And AT and T sees the check in their hand. They're like, okay, we'll slow down or 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 even e e even uh, uh block these sides. Look, uh, click, 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 and then. What happens? That guy with the glasses is blocked from everybody who uses AT&T, and that's that much less revenue that they have. You know, that's an you know as an example. I, I th think I'm stating it right. I'm kind of just going by the seat of my pants on that one. But that's one example. You know, and it's and it's not only bad for business for that guy with the glasses, but it's also bad for you know your customers. They don't access the internet to have an ISP tell them what they can and cannot access. Maybe they want to access that guy with the glasses and watch a nostalgia critic video. But they don't have the choice now. No, we don't like that. You know? It's 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 infringing upon people's freedoms of personal choice. If they're blocking something illegal, that's fine. If it's legal, then no, no. You have no right to block it. Or you shouldn't. Uh, number two, no more net neutrality means ISPs can now force websites to pay for faster content delivery. Yeah, my site, rtgomer.com. We are having money. We, we have money issues. I'm just going to admit it. That's why we had you know the donation drives. That's that's why I have a Patreon account now. Is because we're 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 pretty hard up. That's why we have the tip jar. That's why we have the little advertisements on the side. Because yeah, this stuff has to be paid for in some way, shape, or form. But you know, as it stands now, if they decide, okay, we don't like this site, we can slow things down. But if this site pays us a shit ton of money as 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 a, on a regular basis and we just start, you know, just call it a an an, an access fee or whatever then, you know, we'll, we'll raise it up for you, you know. But if you don't pay, then, well, you, you, you're you just going to be a slow site, and, and people will not want to go to you. And, and and I use my site because it's relatively small. And in, and in a sense, it could be, you know, I guess considered a small business, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? Even though... Sure, sure, yeah. So, um, so, yeah. And that also leads right into number three. Destroying net neutrality is bad for small businesses. I just do want to note that, as, as, as I'm remembering, a lot of the backers of this are Republicans. And what do Republican? What is one of the footholds of the Republican Party being for what small businesses, right? Or at least they say they do. But yet, you know, with with the aforementioned, um, you know, ISP can now forcing. 
can now force websites to pay for faster content delivery. You know, you have – a thing they bring up here is indie retailers such as you know Etsy. If you have an Etsy shop and they either don't know or don't care about Etsy and Etsy loads slow as shit, that's going to be harder to get your stuff out there without going through, say, Amazon. And maybe you don't want to go through Amazon. Maybe you want to go through Etsy because Etsy's been good to you, and you're good to Etsy, so you have a good relationship. Or even if you have your own store that's not even affiliated with a big shopping site, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's like how are you supposed to grow and thrive when your fucking ISP is throttling your traffic? It's you know, it's like the cops continually having crime scene tape around your parking lot. And only so many cars can come in and out. And I say crime scene tape, but it could really be anything, really. It, it's it's like the government blocking your 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 access to, you know, customers and from customers. And I've been going on and on and on and on. I want to hear your thoughts, Kat. Well, this is especially worrisome because a lot of us um, we pretty much live online. Um, and we like to support the people who uh, we patronize their websites. Um, and, and since a lot of us live online, let's say like I like Netflix. So now we're going to have somebody who like, let's say, let's say one of the big movie companies, they decide to line charters pockets with a little bit of extra cash so that they'll slow down um your network connection to Netflix so that you don't even want to use Netflix anymore. Mm -hmm. They could not just harm businesses. They could put people out of business. They could just straight up destroy people's lives for cash yeah. because that's, that's the cost of doing business. Um, so <clears throat> it's going to be a whole lot of now these, these, um, these, service providers can um, basically they can decide to essentially extort uh, companies and websites and stuff who want that, you know, fair <clears throat> use and, and speed. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it, and it's basically going to boil down to um, the, the fastest internet is going to go to the highest bidder. And so you're going to get sites like Amazon um, and, you know, like people with deep pockets are, are going to be able to afford to stay in that competition. But uh, smaller websites who uh, maybe don't want to play, you know, by these really just unfair rules are going to get pushed to the wayside and are going to just completely crumble. And it's really dangerous for for the creative people who want to get into, you know, like having a product and, and a website online, because because now you're going to live in the fear that you are somehow going to be mistreated or persecuted or that you are not going to succeed at something because um, of, of not having uh, a deep enough pocket to basically bribe somebody to get better internet access speed and stuff. Oh yeah, and and that pisses me off to no end. It, it's it's like, "Oh, you want to succeed? <laughs> How much money do you have? Oh, you don't even have a bank account." <laughs> That's How about it. PayPal. Oh, you don't even have that either. Oh, what are you going to do? You don't have money. I have all this money. I can change the world the way I want to. Oh, you want to change it for the better? Oh ho 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 ho. Oh, what? You want you want to the government to raise my taxes? Oh, I can pay for the government to keep my taxes the same. Arr. I want I want to sick bunnies on them and, and and get the bunnies to chew their ears off. And you can tell this is like definitely this just stinks of Republicans who uh are kind of notorious for saying that they like small businesses and then do a lot of things that hurt small businesses. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Yeah, and the last one which is also a kicker cuz we kind of and we 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 you and you and I kind of covered number four without even naming it, but the last one is without net neutrality, your ISPs can make even more money without actually improving the internet. Right now, America's broadband is slow. 
It's low because ISPs can already make gobs of money by charging the rich a ton for high-quality internet while leaving the rest of America with subpar or no service. Ain't that the goddamn truth. But now, with net neutrality gone, ISPs will be able to make even more money off their existing customer base. They won't need to improve service or bring broadband to rural areas because they'll be able to keep growing, or at least financially, by charging content providers more for faster delivery and charging customers more for faster access. It, in all likely, likelihood, this week's ruling means the problems with America's internet will be magnified. We don't need to extend out there. We don't worry about them. They're not going to bring us in money. Even though there are some pretty rich farmers out there that would probably toss their money at you for the best service anyway. But but I'm willing to bet that, you know, even without the rich farmers, it's like what about the people in rural areas? They do, you know, they do need to stay in the know of news and maybe Maybe they want to find different things. Maybe maybe they want to try and access and watch a show they watched when they were a child. The internet allows them to do that. And and that's just one example. Never mind the fact that, you know, without that kind of access, they get their news from where else? well, let's see where. Let's see. Um CNN, Headline News, Fox News, so, you know, sources that are not necessarily completely parsh, impartial rather. Uh one side or the other, the internet allows people to get things that are unbiased, and you know, and and to take that choice away from them, you're basically, yeah, it, it's pretty clear that the people behind this 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 uh, striking down of net neutrality, they they want a they want a country full of people that cannot really think for themselves. In the end, yeah, sure, they make money off of it, and of course, they don't want people to think for themselves because, well, if they thought for themselves, they would see all the bullshit that's going on. They would sniff it out. They wouldn't give them any more money, or at least not as much money unless unless they change. But they don't want to change. Change is scary for them. Uh, so. so it's just – it's so – really just – it's so scary because only big business wins. The entire population of the United States loses. And the mm. only winners are the people who already have a lot of money who stand to make even more money. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. If, if I stood to make a lot of money off of something that was good, off of good, you know, a good way, you know, like, like winning the lottery or something, that would be fine. I have no problem with somebody making money in and of itself. It's how you do it. And this my friends, my listeners, my followers, this is not the way to make even more money than you already have. It's just not. You can invest your money and you can get more back for it. Hell, I've I've actually thought about like, you know, starting up a savings account with with like an interest rate or something at some point or another, and you know, over time it would make me a little bit more money. Just pause a little bit more in there, you still get more money. That's what a savings account does. But you know these rich people, they have so much money they can blow around. They kind of forget. Yeah, um, not everybody can just either make the money as much money as you did, be as successful as you did, or in the worst cases, get born into money and never understand what it's like not to have a, you know, not to have a thermometer that's plated in gold shoved up your ass when you're a baby. And and make no mistake, having the internet is pretty much essential to our society. We could live without the internet, but in in society today, with the way we live our lives and with the way we educate our children, it is absolutely necessary for everyone to be able to access the internet in some way. Yes. You need to have it in schools. Most people really need to have it in their homes. And I'm not just talking about like, yeah, I needed to watch Netflix because I'm a Doctor Who junkie and I need to get in, you know, on Netflix. No, we need it to, like you were saying, we need it to learn. We need it to be informed. We need it to communicate. This is a, not really a luxury anymore so much as a necessity. Mm -hmm. Technically, we can live without it, but as a society, we we need it. We just need it, and nobody should be um, discriminated against based on their income level um, or anything like that. You know, against having it. Exactly. And with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. Thank you guys for listening. 
If you want to find me on social media, you can find me at Gomer21XX on Twitter. You can also find me at RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com. And these shows are now going up on YouTube. The YouTube channel I'm putting them on is Gomer21XX. And I also, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a Patreon page where if you if you want, you can you know you can pledge five dollars a month or whatever, and it would help to go improve the shows. All the information is on there. Just Patreon.com/slash Gomer21XX. And I do want to announce that next week we are going to have a guest. Uh, we're going to have Lady Spaz on next week with with Omega and me, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be great to have her on the show. And um, so there's all of that, and and of course sites also have their own Facebooks and Twitter accounts and everything. If you want to check those out as well, so uh, where can we find you, Cat? Um, you can find me uh, on Twitter um, at Labyrinth Cat, and you can find me on Facebook um, under facebook.com/nerdiscat, and uh, you can also find me on uh, oh god, I'm on other podcasts now, and I don't know how to handle that. Um, <laughs> you can find me on uh, what the fuck. Uh, on the uh, radio drone and you can find me as always um on that guy with the glasses under nerd to the third on the podcast tab yay so you're getting around i'm getting around even, even... The girl gets around <laughs> she knows what she likes mm, the loose reference yes <laughs> oh so once again thank you everybody for listening we will catch you next time and until then this is gomer the ranting thespian with the cat signing off Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.